Yeah, so I have indeed prepared a presentation. I, in fact, prepared it last week when I thought, oh my goodness, there's a meeting in an hour and I haven't prepared my presentation. <laughs> so I've had it. It's, it's been sitting for the last week now and I've been ruminating over it and I actually used it in my online course because why not? Um, so I did do that. Um, and uh, just so you know, this is my the first of three presentations in three hours that I'm doing today. And I actually have to leave this meeting 15 minutes early in order to accommodate the next presentation. So I'll get right to this. So the uh, presentation is called the search for the social algorithm. I just need to size that because I didn't get a chance beforehand. Uh, here we go. Let's just move that so it's a bit easier for me. There we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? Uh, okay. It probably doesn't need to be bigger than that, I don't think. Uh, I think you can read that all right. You're all on your computer screens. So, and that photo there is of me almost exactly 10 years ago at Occupy Wall Street in New York uh, in the thunder snow. <laughs> so it was kind of a wild time and I use that as a, as a theme to frame this. That's why it says by the way October 12, 2021 instead of October 19 last week. So uh, here's the setup right. Uh, we're struggling with uh, things like fake news, what to believe, how to believe, how to learn. We're also facing issues of power, uh, information, misinformation, and of course a bunch of global crises. And, uh, that picture there is the beginning of a lot of that. That's actually Wall Street during Occupy Wall Street, special weapons and tactics. Um, and, you know, we, we've talked about this uh, before. We're in an environment of complexity and chaos with rapid change, information moving at the speed of light, globalization, breakdown of communities, and mismanagement of complex events. Government response to the pandemic being only the most recent of these. Some governments, not all governments. So, uh, our response as a community, and by community here I mean especially an educational community, uh, and perhaps scientific community, um, is that has been poor. Um, and so we need to think of, say, analytics, and especially learning analytics, much more widely. And we need a deeper understanding of ethics rather than just sets of rules and principles. And, and I would argue we need a deeper understanding of knowledge as more than just sets of rules and principles. But all of this is happening in this rapidly changing climate. So, uh, you've heard this story from me before, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, society is transforming from a tree to a mesh. And by society, I mean society, the broad sweep of society. Uh, not just, you know, social organization, but also the organization of knowledge, the organization of education, the organization of science, so on. Um, here's the traditional structure. And this is a structure that should look familiar to you. It, it's the structure that characterizes government, the institutions we work in. It's the structure that characterizes the educational system with large institutions, with masses of uh, people following them. It's also what characterizes the current information environment. It's based on centralization, influence. Um, it's based on or it results in a distribution of resources, knowledge, influence, etc., according to a power law, which creates massive inequalities and inequities, uh, and it's based on, of course, hierarchy. 
and we're moving into something which is much more like a mesh, something that is more peer-to-peer, -peer, characterized by a distributed structure, resembles a discussion more than a broadcast, is more balanced, is more reflective, and arguably more democratic. Nothing new there. So what I've been working on, really, uh, is what it's like to live in a mesh. Um, what matters, how can we know things, how can we do things, and we're only really beginning to learn what it's like to live in a mesh. So, one way of thinking about this, and nothing new to all of you, is thinking in terms of artificial intelligence and especially neural networks. Uh, now, the way we have been approaching AI, certainly inside NRC, and probably I think uh, from a wider perspective, is to think of it as the study of algorithms that st strengthen or weaken connections, or maybe change activation functions, create network topographies, processes of one network, then another, then another, etc. The intent being to produce the set of algorithms that will produce the best result. Uh, now, I know it's a character, caricature of artificial intelligence and neural networks, but it's a 10-minute presentation. Uh, my focus, though, is more on what we might call neural or social network analysis. So I'm not so interested in artificial intelligence as designed, creating algorithms and things like that. I'm more interested in the study of networks in the world. And even that, I want to I want to generalize a bit and say maybe thinking about networks in the world because it's it's not so much an empirical study where I go out and measure them, uh, but it's more of a conceptual study. For example, identification of the entities and the connections between them, looking at network topography and also the growth of networks and the development of networks. From the perspective here of trying to explain why things the way they are and to a degree how we can make things better. So that gives me kind of a grid that we can work from. And this sets the stage for the sort of work that I'm doing. So we have, on the one hand, the study of networks as they exist in the world. On the other hand, we have uh, artificial intelligence as traditionally conceived. So I've characterized these as networks and analysis. And it doesn't actually matter which box stands for which because the diagram is the same either way. And I'm drawing those out or looking at them from the perspective of ethics and literacy. So I have these two broad categories in the work that I'm doing right now. So the first in ethics, I've, I've rolled it up under what we what we might call ethics, analytics, and the duty of care. And, you know, I have this long grab bag list of projects that I'm involved in, but they really do cluster in these two ways. Uh, first is the MOOC that I'm delivering, and you can access it at that link there. But also things like the. Uh, uh, AI and Learning Subcommittee, uh, work on the NRC Research Ethics Board, work with the Data Equity Working Group, um, participation in the Creative Commons Ethics of Sharing Report, um, and then the paper I wrote, Ethical Codes and Learning Analytics. All of these are looking at ethics, but from that network slash analysis perspective. Similarly, I'm also involved in work related to data literacy. Uh, I'm planning a second MOOC uh, for this fiscal year. It'll run from February to March, 2022. It'll be called Data Literacy. Um, a lot of this will be outcomes or an outgrowth perhaps of the DRDC Data Literacy Project, both the work that I did 
uh, earlier this year and the work that I'm doing this fall and next spring. But it's also other things. It's the Fairs Fair book project, uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable data. Uh, it's also the presentation that I'm doing at, uh, well, in 45 minutes. Uh, what does it mean to enroll in a course? It's the COVID EA reports uh, about what people need to learn and how to learn it, and even includes the work in blockchain and consensus, which I think is tied to data literacy in important and interesting ways. So these come together, to my mind, in what I call critical literacies. And this is the project, the, the main project that I'm working on. And I've kind of divided it into three sections. I, I've usually used the six areas, but I'm, I'm thinking of it in terms of these three sections, applications, values, and processes. And, and you can sort of see how this ties into literacy, ethics, uh, literacy and ethics. So the applications are the AI part, syntax, identifying patterns, regularities, classes, etc. And where AI is moving to, to my mind, sense, reference, value, meaning goals. And then the educational side, which has a lot to do with values and, and, and you know, the, the uh, application or interpretation, perhaps more accurately, of these applications in the world, uh, which I divided into use, actions, persuasions, interrogations, etc., and also context. Um, and I lump these under what I call the semantic condition, diversity, openness, interaction, and autonomy. Those are just handy labels that I've used. Uh, they don't signify some sort of ontological state of the world. Uh, they're just handy dandy ways of classifying these things but what i'm interested in is uh you know how the existing organization and development of social networks and and networks in general reflect our values and that that's the outcome of certainly of the ethics project and i think also the uh data literacy project to a degree and then the uh, the uh, the recommendation part, if you will, or the implementation part, if you will, the uh, application of applications and values to practices, which I've classified under cognition and change. There's probably many other ways we could talk about practices, but the idea here is to see how this way of looking at the world changes what we do in the world. So, data literacy is the MOOC. Oops, sorry, wrong way. So, now that gives me a frame for looking both at ethics, looking at how we apply artificial intelligence, uh, you know, such as the applications of AI and learning. And also, uh, one of the sections of the course looks at the decisions that we make in the course of an AI project from data selection to labeling to algorithm selection to tuning to feedback etc. Um, also there's the ethical dimension, the issues that people identify, the historical approaches to ethics and then the more recent work in what's been called the duty of care and then converting that into practices. First of all, looking at what we already have in terms of ethical codes across domains, but also looking at what could be, maybe should be ethical practices in learning analytics. Similarly with literacy, and this is less well formed because it's more in the future and I have more background and research to do on this, but I'm looking again at applications, things like data literacy models, elements of data literacy, etc. Seeing what people have been doing out there in the world about data literacy. This also involves a classification perhaps of different types of data literacy. Uh, 
for example, uh, information literacy, data management practices, etc. Um, then what the values are, and uh, there's two things here that I've put. I might put some more as I look at this and think of it. First of all, the benefits, why we're doing this, and then secondly, how this fits into, in the military context at least, operational requirements. And let me think about other values of data literacy like uh, you know goodness, quality, etc. Um, to, to bring that aspect in. And then resolving these into practices, first of all, measuring and assessing data, uh, data literacy, and then secondly, mechanisms for enhancing data literacy, which I plan to, to some degree, operationalize in the MOOC that I'm doing next uh, spring. So that's basically the project, and that's what I'm up to this year in 10 minutes and I hope you found that interesting. Not, never mind. Never mind. Uh, uh, I have identified, I have identified some, of the, some of the benefits. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember trying them, to remember off, the them off, the of off the top of my head. Not remembering, not remembering them off, them off the top of my head. Um, um, but the, I do but have, I do a, have list a list of them somewhere in somewhere my notes. In my I've notes. got all of my notes, all of my are, notes available. are available um, um, in, uh, in, uh, in a Google, in a Google Docs, file, Docs file, which is available which is from, available the, my from research the, my Docs, research Docs, or the or uh, now, the, uh, now page, page from, my from my reports. Um, um, but I mean, the, the, I mean the, the, the benefits are, benefits are, are, are example, for example, like better, like better uh, uh, responses, responses to changing, to changing circumstances, circumstances, better management, better management uh, uh, in uncertainty, in uncertainty. You know, you responses, know, responses to all to the things, the things that, that I listed off, off the top of my presentation, presentation. Um, uh, chaos, you know, change, chaos, change, management, management etc. Et um, and uh, even, and uh, even uh, things uh, like, things like uh, uh, having a having capacity, a capacity to distinguish, to distinguish uh, uh, what is what known, is or, known what is or what is true from what is not known or what is not true. true. Obviously, Obviously, something very something important, very important, important military, military, military context, context. Um, um, it, know, moves it moves us to the famous, famous, famous field, field doctrine, 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 doctrine known 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 known, known and unknown unknown etc. etc. Data literacy data literacy takes us there there to 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 identify identify what those are. And mechanisms, and mechanisms for understanding, understanding what the unknown, what the unknown, 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 unknown are. are.